goes. Brian. I'm at the bottom of San Clemente Canyon, right by where Genesee Avenue is in San Diego. I am hiking back to my car, which is parked at the Regents by Regents Road. And San Clemente Canyon is a treasure trove of beautiful native plants. It's also got a lot of exotic invaders as well. But there are a lot of beautiful native plants here as well. One that has a very small distribution is uh, Palmer Sagewort. And this is the plant right here. This is Artemisia palmary. This plant, I believe, is only native in San Diego County and I believe maybe northern Baja. I'm not sure how much further beyond that scope that it grows. It's not a super common plant. It's locally... It's, it's locally common, but it's not a plant you're likely to see a lot unless you're here in these local coastal canyons of San Diego. The leaves are pinnately lobed. In other words, they're lobed on the sides, kind of like a feather shape. The plant has an absolutely delightful sagebrush-like smell. It tends to be a little bit on a, like a sweetly spicy smell. And it is related to the sagebrushes, which are also in the genus Artemisia. So this is kind of a sagebrush in a way. Though it tends to be less of a full-blown shrub and more of a sub-shrub with a semi-woody base. Uh, it's a perennial. Huh? It's a perennial. I don't think it's a super long-lived plant, but this plant's been around here for at least several years. But it is a perennial, so it does live through at least several years. It's a beautiful plant, and it's a plant that should be protected. And it's probably list it's probably listed under some form of federal protection, at least I'm hoping. It is a beautiful plant. And here in San Clemente Canyon, it is locally common. I've seen it here in San Clemente Canyon, nearby Tecolote Canyon, which is closer to Claremont. And it does sometimes get up to maybe about six, seven feet tall, but this is a little more characteristic of it, its actual or its typical size. It is found usually in low-lying places like this, like a, a canyon dip. And a lot of times it's found closer to where there's either underground water or under the shade of uh, woodland trees, like California sycamore, which are these leafless winter deciduous trees. They're still in their winter rest period as it is February 24th, 2019. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. And then under the shade of those in coast live oaks, which are the evergreen oaks over there, Corcus agrifolia, variety agrifolia. So Palmer sagewort has a very close relative that's far more abundant in this canyon and far more abundant in general and that's the California sagebrush, which is Artemisia californica. And you'll notice there are some similarities, obviously. It is a sagebrush. It has a sweetly aromatic smell. Quite delightful. It's not exactly the same. This one might have a little more bite to it. It's not as sweet. But they're both wonderful aromas. The, lo the leaves are also divided into lobes, albeit California sagebrush tends to have much more finely divided leaves, or not divided, but lobed leaves. The, lo the lobes are very fine as opposed to the broader lobes on the Palmer sagewort. Um, another major difference is, whereas Palmer sagewort is a perennial slash semi-woody subshrub. The California sagebrush also starts out semi-woody, actually starts out quite herbaceous, but then it does develop a semi-woody trunk, and then with greater age, the trunk becomes thicker, trunks become thicker and woodier, a little bit more of a woody trunk. There's uh, one other plant that Palmer sagewort might be confused with, 
and I'll show it to you right here. And this is uh, Western Ragweed. This is uh, Ambrosia psilostachia, P-S-I-L-O-C-H-Y-A. It also has very finely, uh, finely lobed leaves as well. Kind of in line with the Palmer Sagewort. You can see them right here. Or, and they are related. They are just like the sagebrushes and Palmer Sagewort. They are in the genus, well, not the genus, they're in the, the sunflower family, the Asteraceae. And uh, one major difference right off the bat is that Western Ragweed is not quite as shrubby as the Palmer Sagewort, but it's a lot less, it doesn't really form wood. So the Western Ragweed tends to stay more herbaceous. It is a perennial as well, and it tends to die back to its rootstock. Palmer sagewort does a little bit as well. It does die back a little bit, then it re-sprouts during the winter rainy season and the spring months. So, I just want to put Palmer sagewort into perspective and compare it with two closely related plants. Well, sagebrush being much more closely related than the genus Artemisia. But I just want to point those out. Beautiful members of our native coastal sage scrub woodland community. And very nice smelling plants as well. Western ragweed, I've never really rubbed the leaf of western ragweed. But it's supposed to also have a pleasant aroma. But I've yet to really rub a leaf of that. And it's the same plant. Uh, it's one of the plants that is notorious for hay fever, the western ragweed. So that's something you may want to be aware of if you're here, especially during the fall months when it's blooming. But beautiful plants. And three pieces of the intricate puzzle that is our native flora here in San Clemente Canyon in Southern California. Another thing. California sagebrush is much more widely distributed and much more abundant than the Palmer sagewort. So just just something interesting to keep a note of. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting. And I'll see you at the next tidbit of fun.